Hi, Fleshy! Ty called from the bottom of the stairs. Fleshy looked down to see Twilight with a weird grin on her face, and small black bags on her eyes. Hey, Twilight, are you alright? Fleshy inquired. Small part of concern in her tone. Twilight tried out the stairs to join her. Sort of. A bit tired and hot after the party downstairs, so I thought I'd come here for a breath of fresh air. But otherwise, I'm fine. You? I'm okay. A bit icky here and there, but I'll live. First, I replied with a smile. Who were you talking to anyway? I swore I heard another voice up here. So I asked, looking around for the other speaker. I was talking to Vidar, Flutter Side answered. He came by to see how we were all doing. I was glad to see I was getting better, and he... She trailed off, wondering where she should tell the unicorn about it. And he what? He told me at some point I'm going to take up arms once again. I couldn't entirely say when or why, but he seems sure I will. Flutter was going to tell Twilight what Fighter exactly said, decided so against it at the last minute. Thinking it would only panic the poor mare. Twilight chuckled. <laughs> I wouldn't let it bother you, Flutter Side. As I remarked, enjoy the present, but don't worry about the future. First, I nodded in agreement. She turned her head to look back at the stars. But would you, though? Twilight countered. First, I looked back at her with a good confusion. Excuse me? Would you take up your swords again? Would you risk everything once more? First, I instantly replied, but she already knew the answer. Yes, I would. If you and the others are in danger, if your families are in danger, or you and your loved ones, then I will put them on again. Twilight nodded in understanding. I have to ask, was you done all you did if you were in the Dragon Lord? That you were the flourish that I met on the day of the Eve of the Summer Sun celebration? Was you done what we've been through? Or as I bit her bottom lip and thought, I, I don't know. Possibly. I mean, I did face my biggest fear when you were all down, and I did face a cockatrice to defend you and the my crusaders. So am I done? Who knows? So I smiled. I think I know. She muttered. She looked back at the stars and breathed a sigh of content. Although first I showed herself to, as an easy to push around most pony all most of the time. She had strength in her that was unrivaled by most ponies. For that reason alone, Twilight believed Fluttershy would do what she had done if she wasn't a dragon lord. Twilight? Fluttershy suddenly said, Yeah. You know, you asked me the day my father died if I was ready to go home. Twilight nodded. Well, I can answer that for you now if you like. Twilight smiled. Are you ready to go home now, Fluttershy? First, I looked from the sky to her friend with a warm smile. Yes, I'm ready to go home. What about your injuries? Oh, I think I should be okay, thank you. First, I said reassuringly. Let's go and find the others and ask them if they're ready as well. First, I turned around and made her way back to the main hall, taking every step extremely slowly as to not fall. A twilight followed close behind to be there when the catch as she fell. Freya, meanwhile, was standing in the corner of the main hall. Watching her flock dance and celebrate the reunion of the country, as well as Fire Side and Friends' victory, as well. My Lady Freya. Freya turned her head to face the one who called her name. Her heart beat a little faster, and eyes grew wide when she saw it was one of those she had sent to retrieve Thrall's body. She sipped back tears, walked up to Chestnut's horse. Do you have my cousin's body? I'm afraid not, my lady, he replied solemnly. Freya's eyes narrowed in anger. And find that, pray tell? Because we never found one, my lady. Freya's eyes widened the size of saucer. What? She whispered. Also had a loss of words. We found the place easy enough, but when we looked inside, all we found was riding pony corpses. None of the bodies we saw were the size of a horse. Freya felt her hind legs give away and collapsed onto her rump. Tessa Stelling sprang up forward to help her, but she pushed him away with a hook. Are you absolutely sure there wasn't a body? The horse nodded. We checked all over, but we still found nothing. Her heart began to flare with joy and hope. What about the Red Head Range? Did you check around there? The horse nodded once more. Yep. We searched everywhere, still nothing. Anyone we found hasn't seen him, nor did he recall anything like him. I don't know, my lady, but it seems as if he becomes a ghost. Freya looked to the ground in hope and dismay. If Thrall was alive, then why wasn't he here? Are you absolutely sure about this? 
So he asked again. I speak the truth, my lady, the horse said. Then asked, shall we tell everyone? We tell them nothing, she said once. She got back on her hose, began to whisper. There are times when it will be our darkest. We might as be once more, but there are many enemies around us and inside our borders. Such a weakness they may strike. Spread the word, however, of a ghost horse that roams the land. Find these evils wherever he goes. Give the people something to hope for. The horse looked confused, but bowed his head. It shall be as you wish, my lady. He spun around, galloped back outside. I glimmered the story of this ghost horse. It disappeared in the mist, it reappeared. We fought anything with two foot blade before his enemies could get a fix on him. It was gone once more. Frey smiled at the idea. Throw him like that. She thought. Freya, are you okay? Fireside asked as he walked up to her. Freya looked at Fireside with a huge smile on her face. Never better, Fireside, she replied. Fireside didn't need to know about Thoreau's possible survival. She didn't want to give the little Pegasus false hope. If it turned out false, and Thoreau was indeed dead. How are you feeling better, my friend? Oh, I feel so much better. For I thank you, Freya. Was this why I wanted to ask you something? Sure thing, Fireside. What did you want to ask? First, I swallowed down the lump at her and asked, Will it be all right if my, me and my friends leave for home tomorrow? It's been a while. We're getting to miss our families and loved ones. Freya chuckled and put a hoof of Fluttershy's shoulder. Fluttershy, like I said before, you are not a prisoner here. You are free to leave the city and country whenever you like. But let's know you'll always have a here in Castilian. Fluttershy grinned and jumped up and hugged the human Kowalska. She tried to ignore the quick pain going through her back of doing such a thing, but couldn't help but grimace because of it. Freya returned the hug with a single hoof by his shoulders, so it's not to hurt her back. Have you told your friends about this? Freya asked once he pulled away. First, she shook her head. I'm trying to find him to ask if he wants to go back, but I can't find him anywhere. Oh, you'll find him in the courtyard outside. Frey said, pointing to the door that leading to the courtyard. Farsai said her thanks and looked out the hall into the courtyard. Twilight by her side for support. The two found Rainbow, Pinky, Verity, and Applejack sitting in a circle with a small cup in their hose, looking at each other hesitantly. So, who wants to go first? Rainbow asked, their eyes moving from pony to pony. How about we do it together? Verity suggested. Applejack nodded in agreement. We'll do it all for you, okay? The four ponies raised the custard mouse and prepared for the taste. Well, damn, boy! She said, simultaneously, the air gulped down the entire continent of their cups. Rainbow dropped her cup and finally shivered. Ugh! That was nasty! She stuck her tongue at me and disgusted look at her face. Pinky shook as well, but afterwards had a large grin on her face. I get some more of that! Brady made a disgusted look as well. That I admit it would be nice to adult such pesities on a case such as these, but I won't mask for that any more time soon. I thought it was fine. I slice as many of my apples, I might as well take some more when I get home. Applejack commented. She went towards the hall, great to see Fireside Twilight sitting by the stairs. Oh, you too? Care to trash all this? I think I'll pass, thank you, Applejack. Fireside said. She went up for Sarah cell down onto her stomach. Rainbow leaned forward to help her up. Rainbow, it's okay. I'm firmly down like this. It's not as painful as sitting. Rainbow leaned back and sighed quietly in relief. Um, girls? First I started. All eyes turned on her. How do you feel if if we start back to Pinefield tomorrow? The grins from Applejack, Rainbow, Pinky, and Rarity said it all. You sure, Sergey? Applejack queried. As long as you're okay to walk that far, then I'll be happy to hit that. I'll be okay. Don't worry about me. What about you three? She turned to look at the ass. Yeah! Pinky cheered. We're going home! She bounced around the courtyard and absolutely giddy. Daddy, it's fine by you that I'll be happy to return home. Besides, I'm starting to miss Suki about my pants, Brady said. Yeah, I bet my boss is going to wonder where I am. Rainbow sighed. As nice as it's here, she gestured to say, Castilian. I'd like to see Questy at Ponyville again. Fireside nodded in confirmation. Glad that our friends were ready to return as well. Then, 
If it's okay with you, we'll set out our first light. The five ponies sign confirmation. He fell silence. He watched the stars, listened to the sound of the horses celebrating the reunification. I'm glad they gave us a nice new sad for us to take, Randy said. Mario and Salvag with a keen mark on his face. When the bell appeared, he took their saddlebags with it. And unfortunately, the horses Freya sent to retrieve them never found the ship. So it was presumed the ship sank when the waters began to get rough. Mario side was more gunned than the others about the loss. Her saddlebags originally belonged to her father and had nearly everything about him in them. However, the horse had gone on. We did find this wrapped up on the river bank because the outside horse could see. He took something from his bag and held it in his teeth. Blairside's face lit up in delight at the sight of her medallion. She took it from the horse and said, Thank you so much. And checked to see if the picture was damaged. Thankfully, it wasn't. As the saddlebags, Freya reconsisted to making six new saddlebags for them all. These were the key marks on their faces, and also the new emblem of horse guard near her side, as a remembrance feature, as well as the bags from places sleeping bags were supplied, and some horse kid delicacies for their long trip back home. Hmm! Wayfair bread! Fluttershy looked back at her new bag, smiling at the kind gift they were given. Her eyes drifted away upwards, looking back to Castilian, which was now way in the far distance. The departure for Castilian had been cheery and suffered at some time. Although Freya was happy for them to leave, she was sad to see her friends go. You'll all come visit again, won't you? She so asked before they departed. Of course we will, Fireside promised. God willing, we'll all meet again in the last of the Dragon Wars 2, the quest for more money. Fireside promised. Won't we, girls? The five ponies behind her nodded agreement. You'll come to visit us in Ponyville, won't you? Of course I will, Freya promised. After a few more words and a few tears, Blairside and friends turned around and began the long walk towards the gates of the city. Along the way, the horses climbed the streets to bid farewell to the six ponies. They bowed their heads as they passed. Beautiful flowers were thrown before them as a mark of respect, or placed on their backs behind their ears next to the crowns they wore. After a while, they arrived to find the city gates open to them, and beyond that, the open world and the road home. They passed the gates with a few goodbyes, the best wishes from the guards on duty, and were soon in the open plains, following the main road south, towards Equestria. Marissa opened her eyes, and looked back at the city that had been her home for two weeks. Now a small lump in the world, but still looked as beautiful as it looked from up close. She looked away again, and back towards the way they were going. She began to wonder if anything changed in Equestria at the time she and her friends had been away. Had Ponyville been fully rebuilt? Had any of her animal friends gotten any better? The more she thought about it, the more she wanted to get home. She began moving once again, limping heavily as she tried to keep at a good, quick pace. Say, how about a song as we walk? Twice suggested. Something to remind us of home. I don't know, well, Abstract said. I remember Blake Magatron singing it once on our way home from Ray Hoover. Go on, let's hear it. Elfzak nodded and took a deep breath to begin to sing. As he sung, Fluttershine wondered why she didn't sing often, because she had a beautiful voice. It felt like to her like listening to a nightingale singing its morning song as the rays crept into the trees. Oh, I love this song! I haven't, I haven't heard this song in ages! Ahem. From the King Arthur soundtrack. Called Song of the Exile. Land of Bam, land of eagle, land that gave us birth and blessing, land that calls us ever homewards. We will go home across the mountains. We will go home, we will go home, we will go home across the mountains. At that moment, the points next to her sank and joined in. Land of freedom, land of heroes, land that gave us hope and memories. Hear our singing, hear our longing. We will go home across the mountains. We will go home, we will go home. We will go home across the mountains. Y'all know that song? 
Abe said, got surprised. Oh, yes, I love that song. First, I said, something a bit out of breath. I admit, when I first heard it, I cried a little. Abe said, good back there, I chuckled. <laughs> Sugar cube, this is a big thing, though. I don't admit, I cried when Big Mac sung it. It moves me more than any other song I heard. Still does in a way. When the rest of y'all here at land? She turned her way look forward towards the others. Rainbow turned her head back and looked at her friend. <laughs> well, I heard first when... She cut herself off and her eyes widened and hard as she looked behind the apple jack. FLUSHY! Apple jack started head around to see Fluttershy on her side. Panting furiously, her side rising and falling rapidly. And the clasping in Sauston. Rainbow saw past her and went to Fluttershy's side. With a hood extended to help her up. There's no way you can cheat me on like this, Rainbow said. Get on my back, I'll carry you. First, I quickly pushed her wolf away. It's okay, Rainbow Dash. I'll get there by myself. She so tried getting back on all fours again, only to make it half late to clasp it to her stomach. I'm not taking a no for an answer, Fluttershy, Rainbow snapped. The entire world can see you're not fine. There's no way you get there by yourself. Circle Cube, Rainbow's rap, Abstract said. In sight you're in, you must suddenly restrain yourself, possibly even die. No, Fluttershy shied. I have to do this. I have to prove I can do it. She tried getting up again, while the airs looked on hesitantly, unsure as they should add. Fluttershy me and all four as a to herself with this victory. She took a step forward, felt a narrow of her legs give way as she fell forward. Before she could hurt her face, she was stopped by what felt like a warm blanket covering her. She looked at one of her legs to see a blue orb glowing around there. She looked up to see Rarity's horn glowing. She just flung through the air and sat on Rarity's back. She didn't have the strength to protest, so she gripped her legs around Rarity's shoulders and waist. That's a bit, Rarity inquired. First, I gave a weak nod in response. Ah, come on, everybody, let's get going. <laughs> she spun around, continued trying down the road. I was following behind her, looking at her son. You'll have to do this, Rarity. Fluttershy whispered a little later, when she was able to speak again. Not me, no offense, but sometimes you could be a little dickhead. I'm doing this because you're my best friend, and I can't stand to see you suffering like you were back there. I admit I might have been into the false road, but I think I had to be. She craned her head around to look at her with a warm smile. I will not take any other answer. Fluttershy looked at her for a moment, then smiled. Thanks, Rarity. She turned her head to look at the others. Um, sorry for being a bit stubborn, girls. I appreciate you all care about me, really. I just don't want to feel like a white to you. The four mayor smiled comfortably at her. Don't mess in it, Twice so said. Don't you ever feel like banging us down, ever, Pinky added. Where's Sai's eyes moved to look at the ground before them? Can't help it. Well, you can, Rainbow said, flying next to her. We're your friends, and we'll help you with each other through everything. Remember that. I think I will. First, I promised it thought. Although you are more to me, my friends. What's more? She smiled at Rainbow lovingly. The rest of her head back on Rarity's neck found herself getting tired and sleepy. The rest of the day passed with poor jokes, firstly to random songs, and castle talking kind of fanciful silence. They passed through a couple of small villages where horses were returning to their homes now the war was over. They stopped by what they were doing and stared at the six ponies as they walked down the road south. Prompting the mares to pick up the pace as they found themselves in most of the stairs, began, they were unnerving. Eventually, the sound, sun began to melt into the horizon, and they saw it to call it a night. They moved off the road into a small wood where they could take shelter from what they feared to be a storm approaching from the north. On making camp, Rarity lowered herself onto her belly, and then with her magic, guided Fluttershy gently onto her blanket as to not hurt her. I hope I wasn't a burden on you. Whereas I says, Rarity lay down alongside her. And nonsense for the side, Rarity said with a dismissive wave of her hoof. You know, it's not just a feather, truth be told. You're just saying that. Yep, it's a truth. From behind her, Rainbow yawned. Ugh, I don't know about you, please, but I need my shut eye. Good night! With that, she disappeared behind her blanket and fell asleep instantly. Do you think we'll get to the board tomorrow, Twa? Abzak whispered. Twice shrugged. We'll see. But I hope we'll get as close as possible, so we'll be in question the day after. Good night, everypony. Soon Twilight was lying in her blanket and falling asleep. Soon, everypony was asleep, except for Rarity and Fluttershy. 
And Eddie tried to go to sleep, but she couldn't due to hearing Bryce side visit about, rolling from one side to another, squeaking every time she had to go on her back. Nestle, the unicorn rolled over to face her. Are you okay, Fantasy? She asked, trying to keep the hesitation of being awake in her voice. First, I stopped moving for a moment, then slowly rolled over and looked at her guiltily. I'm sorry, Mary. I'm gonna keep you awake. Where the only nine? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. I just can't get comfortable, nor do I feel like going to sleep yet. I'm sorry, I I'll stay crying from now on. First, Rarity sat to teach and figured it silly, trying to think something to help her sleep. How about I sing you an alibi? She suggested eventually. First, I looked at her oddly. Are you sure? Won't it be a bit weird? Of course not, sweetie. Rarity replied, waving her hump to dismissal. So it's about telling me how you sung to her and the girl since before. Um, so she didn't tell you how she did most of the singing in that a little boy way? And uh, I don't think she did. I'll have to ask her about that. Anyway, I shall sing you a song that puts you in such a deep, such a seat you don't want to wake up for ages. Our side point. I'm sure Rarity was telling the truth, but not nonetheless. Okay, Rarity, if you want to sing it to me. Rarity grinned, glad she had a chance for this. Okay, my dear. Just lay down and read your threats. First, I nodded. Then lay down on the grass facing the unicorn. Mary got up and moved herself closer to the Pegasus. She placed the hoof on Fireside's head and began to stroke her delicately. To Fireside, it felt like a must need massage. And it already seemed like she wanted to sleep. That was until her friend began to sing. Mary has such a beautiful voice, but seeing the song coming from her mouth was what she was born to sing. You know this night, you will not go astray. Though shadows fall, nor still the stars find a way. Awaken from a quiet sleep, hear the whispering of the wind. Awaken as the silence grows in the solitude of the night. Darkness spreads through all the land, and your bitty eyes open silently. Such as have forsaken all, most for our horizons. Nightmare comes when shadows grow, eyes close, heart beats low. Fear all this night, you will not go astray. Those shadows fall, still the stars find their way. A new can always be strong. Lift your voice to the first light of dawn. Dawn's just a heart beat away, hope's just a sunrise away. Verdi would have continued, and enough of her sounds of what seemed like a cat's purr. She looked around, expecting to see a cat of some sort wanting attention, and looked down and smiled as she realized it was Flareside snoring. The Pegasus was now fast asleep, side rising and falling peacefully. Verdi smiled, glad that the song had worked. Even though she didn't consider the song a lullaby. Good night, Fletcher's high, she whispered, before turning around making her way back onto her blanket, hoping she could get some sleep. Despite the fact that it was all quiet now, Rarity couldn't fall asleep. Ever since she had learned the flowers was barren, she felt awfully guilty for coming up with the subject of having foals. So guilty, she didn't even think an apology would make up for it. She felt incredibly stupid also. I should have seen the signs of Fletcher's eyes, eyes, she thought. She was hot all the time I came with it, and I was too stupid to notice. Even when she was hurt by it, she still took it like a man. She sighed outwardly. She's braver than I am. But she rolled over once again and looked at Fletcher's for a long time, wondering how she could make up for it. How could Fletcher's feel like having a family? Her ears pricked up at the thought that might work. But then again, would it? What if I make Fletcherside feel worse because of it? She decided on asking Twilight about it at some point. Hope she might agree on it, and maybe the rest of the girls. Or we're planning together as he finally settled to sleep. Next morning, the six mirrors woke at the first sign of the sun creeping over the horizon. After a quick snack and break, bathroom break, cleaning up after themselves, they set off out once again and hoped they would make it to a equestrian horsekin border by nightfall. Fletcherside tried walking again. Get going for about two hours until she collapsed her exhaustion again, with what rarity insisting on carrying her again. It was around midday when they discovered the first of the mass graves. 
We must be approaching Andalusia, Twice said grimly as she looked at the first mound of the recently moved mud. The grave stretched right along the mine road, cut off at different points and each were a random length. Six mares lowered their heads as a mark of respect and quickly moved on. A flashlight bouncing on Rarity's back due to her heavy canter. A few hours later, they caught sight of the city of Andalusia. Along the roads of the city were more and even larger mass graves than the ones they had seen privately. Horses walked along the bell of the walls, busy repairing or patrolling the city. One horse above the gate saw them and hailed them. What business do you have here? He held them. Maybe that's Little Tom. was surprised a little so he could jump back. Hey there! She greeted the horse with a salute. We amazing ponies are on our way home after saving the world for the 300th time in our short lives. Would you mind opening the doors to let us be on our way? The horse blinked. He looked up and saw the crown of a horse call on Rainbow's head. He quickly nodded and called for the gates to be open. Rainbow nodded and thanks to join her friends. With a heavy ground, the gate doors parted away from them, letting them see the inside of the city, the process the horses were making. Nearly every building had wooden ramps alongside them, leading up to the gantries, with teams of horses working on putting bricks and stones into place. The city was alive with whinnies and chatter. The sound of rebuilding, the sound of life getting back in the city. The first eye looked better than it did when she had last been here, under her rare rarity walked through her streets. Towards the gates, her friends had used to get inside. She looked towards one of the newly finished buildings and saw a black horse mark where some poor unfortunate horse met his or her end in Heindar's puppet. The city would rebuild and be repopulated. But the scars of what happened here would never leave. Like the ones she had. In that moment, she would wonder if she would be able to cope to Pineville. But she lived such a peaceful life there before all this took place. She never wanted it to end. Now she was a warrior. A pony that was killed. The thought made her sick with revulsion. Without the whole experience, she wished she could just see home again. But now she was on her hiding home. She questioned if she would ever feel like being home again. After a few minutes, she looked to see and went back onto the wild plains of Southern Horska. Follow the main road, passing warm mass graves and sons of cut down trees to make the ranch and gantries to rebuild the city. Another hour later, they finally passed the last of the graves and were back into the woodlands, when Fluttershy was captured and taken prisoner. At night, it had all been to see, but the lowering sunlight, the leaves on the trees all seemed to glow gold. All the leaves were starting to get brown, the color of autumn, somewhere at the ground before them. Fluttershy looked from the leaves to what was ahead and gasped. The mountain she had crossed to get here was a large wall in the distance. So all stood between her friends and home. I think we should stop here for twilight, Raymond suggested. Then make it over to board tomorrow and make it to the trots by next evening. Twilight lied to her while he nodded in agreement. We'll set up camp over there. She pointed to the edge of the wood, a small area they could use. The six points moved off the road and set up camp. I was exiting at the fire with a fantastic new piece of equipment she received from the farm horses. As a piece of twig formed to the save of a bow, with two pieces of string holding onto another twig with it. With it, they soon had a fire going. There's a little cat that you got there, Applejack, Raymond commented. Yeah, it is, isn't it? The horses at the farm are one that gave it to me as a gift. Hell handy when I go camping next time. Care to come camping with me sometime when we get back home, girls? I don't know how to think about it, Randy replied. I admit, I am getting a bit tired of all this nature. I finally shouted out to the moon was high in the sky. Talk about what they were going to do once they returned home. What they were going to miss most about Castilian. All of them, first I looked lost in her mind. I don't think I can go back, she said solemnly and sadly. My pony's smiles faded as one turned to face to face this looks of concern. Now why the hell do you think that, Sir Goob? I was like asked gently. First I looked at him with sad eyes. With everything we've been through, but everyone we've been lost. I pick is this pony from Ponyville. The last thing is done. You don't. Elsack answered honestly. You know that? Move on. That's what you think. That's what I've done. You know you probably never go back to what you were more than a month ago. Verdi added. But you still have the same kind, open heart. And that's what we have about you. Besides, you still have us. Mabel said, seeing you alongside her friend. You need help getting back at the sling of things? Just shout. Yeah, Twilight agreed. To be honest, I thought this thing with Discord and the Changeling invasion. How can we continue after all that? But I continued. Because I had you lot by my side to help me. 
And I just drove super special awesome heli footage that I finally wing party skate you back on your hooves. Okay, he said. They'll still wear here for you, sir. Can you help Zack Venus? And no, we're going through the slang thawing. Where's I perked up for the first time in a while? Smiled into the mall. Thanks, girls. Now I know I can go home. She suddenly got out loud and yawned. Well, I'm going to sleep. It's surprisingly tiny and loud on Raggy's back all day. Now you know how I feel. Rarity said, everybody added quickly, but not lousy on Rarity's back, of course. We all know you mean it, Rainbow. Twice so I said, Anyway, good night, every pony. With that, five of the six ponies moved to their sleeping bags. Twice touched herself into one, where Rarity suddenly appeared above her. You okay, Rarity? She asked. Yes, but I want to ask you something. Can we talk a little more private, please? She whispered. It'll be quick, I promise. Five and nine, and carefully, quietly got out of her sleeping bag. And followed Rarity away from the clamp towards the main road. Once he could stare themselves out of earshot, Rarity asked, I wanted to ask you a question for a while now. Well, since yesterday, but still a long time. Is it okay to name a pony a godmother, even if you don't have any children or consider it? Twice so eyes widened for a moment, then narrowed the confusion was she does to ask. I'm not entirely sure, Rarity. I mean, I don't think there's a rule against it, but I'll have a look for you, if you like, when we get back. What do you want to know anyway? Randy explained to Twilight how horrible she felt after discovering Fluttershy was barren, going on about how lovely their kids would be together at their spa dates, and her idea could make up for it. Do you think that could work, or would it make Fluttershy even worse? So she two sighing legs wrapped around her and pulled her to a hug. Randy, you're a genius! Rainbow cried. Shh! Twilight whispered. Give me voice down. Were you listening to us? Yes, but that's not the point right now. Think about it, you two. When we're gone, Flareside's going to be all alone, right? Sorry, question. We're probably going to end up true. Both of said, So what better way can we ensure Flareside has something to remember us by? So what Rarity suggested. That way, Flareside will never be alone. Rarity Twilight sings looks. It's a good idea, Rainbow, but we'll wait and see what happens. Twilight yawned. Come on, you lot. Let's get back to bed. <laughs> a big day tomorrow. The soon they went back to the campsite. Glad upon those that he hadn't disturbed any pony else. Especially the pony they were talking about. He slipped to the sleeping bags and fell asleep, dreaming about what would happen tomorrow. The sun was crawling over the horizon when they set out the next day. First, I requested if Rarity could carry her until he reached the mountain path. Then she could try and make it up there herself. Rarity agreed, and with first I back, he moved back into the mountain main road, towards the mountains once more. He passed more trees, old and forgotten farm fields, and one burnt out ability that Fireside recalled seeing as he passed her here the first night she came to Horska. She knew then that the mountain path was soon to be beginning, and it would soon leave this country. In their hour, and it started enough, the path started to go up towards the sky as it hugged the mountains. Annie, would you mind laying me off now, please? Fireside whispered. I'll try and walk the rest of the way. Annie reluctantly nodded. As he let Fluttershy off and helped her stand on her own for a host, the space is dim with little to no difficulty. A few words of her concern to herself and friends by her side she need be. She started to climb up the path, followed close beside her friends. About halfway up, she looked towards Horska and thought she would actually miss this place. Sir, she had a few friends here, but the only thing she knew or remembered the country was by death and destruction. I mean to come back at some point. She instructed them. I agree with you there, Super Cube, Applesack said. It'll be nice to try to get some better memories of this place at some point. The other side in agreement. First, I gave one last look to the country that saw her become what she was. Turn around, continue her slow climb up the mountain. Half hour later, she noticed the road disappeared over the right edge of the mountain. She realized what a faster being heart as the top was approaching, and the question was soon be in sight. She picked up the pace. Limping that she was cursed with her slow or heavily as she quickened herself. She took the last few feet while standing where she was when she began her time in Horska. She has a choice, get her lips as salt as she were before her. She was finally home. She returned to Equestria. First, I quickly stared at the descent at a more reasonable pace, relishing every step she took as she was back in her homeland. Rima and the other half couldn't wait any longer. She quickly soared past the others and prostrated herself by on the ground, kissing her roughly. 
Oh, have I missed you, my sweet, sweet Equestria? He was squeaked. So you're all there, Faggot Guild. I'm home! So it's kissing the ground where her friends arrived on a flat. All could be her weird looks as she watched her roll around in the dirt. And he then simply struck at being and rolling about as well. Starting to feel the Equestria dirt with joy in their eyes. Obviously, realized they were in home country and safe. Soon, they picked themselves off the ground and soon followed towards the trots. The side side walking and seeing how much better she felt. It was about two hours later when Rainbow Dash realized something. Oh, guys, I think we may have a problem. The pony stopped to look at her in fright with confusion. Rainbow Dashing? Pinky inquired. Remember the last time we were in the trots? Rainbow reminded him. Few sides of O oh or Ah came from a moment later. All of them, except for Fireside, looked confused. What happened to Trots? Fireside asked. Well, after we woke up for that drug you gave us, we all quickly had decided going after you, Rainbow explained. We went to the main hall of the inn, but to the start, Commander of the Garrison, Twilight went on. The main left us in the inn after we tried to get out, Pinky added. But thanks to Primmy, he saw the passes out of the inn and out of there. That passage is our way to the city, Twilight Pinnis. You can remember what it is, Twilight? Applejack asked, because I can't. Twilight nodded. Yep, just follow my lead. We'll be back inside the city before nightfall. We followed Twilight on the path, passing the orchard rainbow, and Applejack had to try across the path. Which, the weapon was in Rainbow's bag. I'm going to mount this on my wall somewhere, she said before the south for Castilian. Mother of hell, also a shot hanging him at. Five points only rolled their eyes. A few hours later, and they crossed the little bridge. Twilight remembered crossing when they escaped from the city. The entrance is just there, she said, pointing at it. First, I followed her friend, stretched out like <laughs> and saw her eyes, the cave entrance her friends had taken to get out. Surprises, a few overgrown twigs hid from sight, but she could make out the dark passage behind it. Wow, you're right. You got a memory, Twilight. Helps they said upon memory the bridge in the path they took. Twilight back at her and smiled. Tried towards the cave entrance to disappear behind the branches. Fireside followed close behind, and Applesack, Rainbow, Rarity, and Violet Pinky bounced up the hill to the cave entrance. Uh, pfft. Just remember, Twa, Applesack said, getting the unicorn. Now we know how to get into the city. You have any idea how to get out? It? It's easy. They give the kerosene hired for us to sell it to Trots, then we'll finally take up Star's offer of taking it. Back to the coin field. Stroll up by, get it back into the carrots, no problem. No problem? Then what about Fluttershy? Every pony froze as they remembered Fluttershy was still with them. But they remembered leaving the city with her two days ahead. Think about it, y'all, I was explaining. As far as we all know, Star still thinks we're still in prison today and Ruby wasn't over us. Not going out to help our friend taking part in spectacular battles of being killed. We go, saw our sales with Fireshy and Sadly in. The quest is cursed after we rise. Brewery could get into a lot of trouble for us. Twice years went down, for she knew Applejack was right. All of a sudden, you couldn't leave Fireshy down here. It's okay, girls. Fireshy broke the long silence. Let us head out again and go to the main gate. Star will suspect the thing. She just threw her head down the tunnel. Go on and get back inside. I'll see you in 20 minutes. You sure you'll be all right, Sir Grim? I want you, didn't I? I'm sure I'll be fine for about 20 minutes. Really? Fireside turned around and made her way back to the cave entrance. Fireside! Twilight called out to her. Fireside stopped and looked back. Be careful. I'm always careful. She replied. With that, she walked back outside and towards the path, leaned towards the sea. She took a deep breath of fresh air, falling towards the trots. One more obstacle, Fireside, she thought. You can take these weapons out of your saddlebags and put them somewhere until you have to use them again. Nearly half an hour later, mostly because she had to stop for a moment to catch her breath, she arrived outside the northern gates of her trots. The gates seemed a lot smaller than she remembered them by. I was a little concerned. She walked up and gave it three hard knocks. The sound of her hoof hitting the wooden gate seemed to echo across the forest that surrounded her. For a long time, nothing happened. And the fireside began to think they were still playing in. So she started turning around and making their way back to the cave, the plan B in her head. She was on her way back when suddenly a heavy groan from behind her made her stop dead. She turned back to see the gate opening with glee in her eyes. A unicorn, clad in golden armor with a question suddenly emerged from the other side. 
I'm going to find her side with a complete shock. Fireside opened her mouth to speak. Before she got her to word, the unicorn bolted back his say. Fireside tried to try quickly to say. Now, now I'll see the lixir was seeing me, as if they were seeing a ghost. Fireside moved until she was standing, just where she and Star had nearly fought three weeks ago. Three weeks? Has it been that long? When did I sleep? Fireside knew as she looked around. The dry sand changed much of her time away. Instead of the wet mud, the seemed the ground had dried up. It was now easier to walk around. Well, buddy, a voice said from her mouth. Fireside looked to see Star walking towards her. Look surprised at his face. She stopped a few feet away from her and looked all over her. Particular scars across her face and back. How are you still alive? First I strived. I was awfully lucky. She replied. Now, yeah. are my friends back home safe as ask? The never since that star's face began to show. Um, well, see, you didn't want to go home. Instead, you wanted to come after you. So I left them in the end and left them there since. First I gave a little threatening growl. But they've been well fed, Remember to force me. Quick again. If you want to see him now, I'll have the barrier trigger down. He turned around and let Fireside back towards the end. All the while, Pegasus is doing her best to keep a straight face. They soon found themselves outside the end. With a flick of golden light from his horn, Star brought down the shield around the door. A moment later, the door burst open to five mirrors. Fireside was not supposed to have seen three weeks emerge. And Elle jumped her in a tight hug and yelled at her at the same time for leaving the way she did. I'm sorry! She saw, try your best to sound like she was crying. I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Well, pfft, you will be sorry. Elf said, growling confusedly. Very, very sorry. Of quick moves, he gently pushed Fireside back aside, slammed the door beside him. While he was, so he couldn't be followed. We'll see our stars here, shot. The elf burst out laughing. You should have seen his face when he pulled Fireside in, Rainbow cried. Tears in her eyes from laughing so hard. You know something? So I said something a bit out of breath. A chest actor I liked so much. Why should I don't think I'm acting? Because we are amazing at Well, I'm amazing at anything I did, Rainbow said. It's in my nature after all. Marcy I took a deep breath. I was about to speak up again when she received a hug from behind. Oh, God, so I believe you might it, Rainbow cried happily. When I heard knocking from the placement, I made me shove out of my skin, but then I wondered who it was, so I opened the door. Now there's not a big smiles on their faces. Tell me what far behind. Well, I'm Robin. It's good to see you. As I managed to turn around, quickly gave Broom an awkward hug. It's good to see you too, she said to Nan chuckling. It's good to see all of you. They all chuckled at that. So tell me, everybody, what have you been up to? Not to push it once more, I saw the scars for the first time. I'll see him out of the gas. How did you get those? So, the rest of the night, First, I proceeded to tell him what happened after leaving the trots, what he discovered by herself, and how she managed to fight the greatest threat the world held and defeated it. Once he was done, Bruma said speechless. He heard tales like this before, but they were always from books and fairy tales. On This, on the earth, was reality. The reality of a bunch of mares having an adventure, and the fact that it was real scared him. Bruma. Twilight inquired, Do you know the carriage is still there for us to take us home? Freeman looked over to Twilight, see some for a moment as he thought about it, and nodded. Oh, I think so. Saw a coming to the door every now and then. See if you're not wrong, Lonnie. And we can see this offer. I told him you all said no, we're sleeping at the moment. So as far as I know, the carriage is still there. Good. Because now that Fireside is back, we can take the carriage straight to Pineville. Oh! And not see Fireside's girlfriend, Stratford, Rainbow Tease, making the Pegasus request to go red. She's not my girlfriend, Rainbow, Fireside Karen, the bus on her face disappearing. She's never gonna let that down, is she? Anyway, I'll go with the idea of taking the carriage back. Anything to be walking anymore. I feel like if I walk any further, my legs will fall off. Rainbow over her mouth. You say use your wings, then. But stop as you remember the left leg was still tightly bandaged together, giving her a flight. Well, so dead. She said instead, we'll stay here tonight, sit off the carrots in the morning. Well, that's all, the seven parties went off to their respective beds, and waited patiently for the dawn. Oh, uh, guys, <laughs> off topic, but do you ever stop and think, in the My Little Pony movie, does, how did the Storm King's team 
manages to capture pa capture Cloudsdale. They don't have the ability to walk on clouds. An anti magic prevents them from using that spell. So all I can imagine right now during that movie was every pony in Cloudsdale going What the heck is going on over in Camelot? Right. That was your random thought of the day. The next pony, Cloud loud knocking in the front door waking the six mares. Rainbow grumbled something as he roasted off the pill, with some of her mane going over right eye. Who the hang knocks in this time of day? she complained. Ugh, you're probably gonna get in that giggly joke, giggling. She went to her party at once and bolted off the bed and realized what the actual time was. We can't be replying, it's nine o'clock! Come on, or we'll never get holding! At once, the remaining half asleep pony jumped out of bed and started packing for the trip home. Once I was the last to get up, but most of the remaining of her face and bits of it sticking out like long pieces of grass. It wasn't a pretty sight. She ran a hoof through it and soon announced that it was flying straight again. She turned her head around to see her friends packing their saddle bags for hopefully the last time, all of them with wide grins on their faces, as she chatted excitedly about coming home. Marsh I too felt excited, and yet surprisingly nervous about it. She was wondering if her animal friends would believe her when she told them of their adventures, whether or not other ponies would believe her her friends told. So worry about it, Marsh I assured herself. If other ponies don't believe it, then that's fine by me. I'm just glad to be going home with all my friends. Freddy was cut short when Freeman opened the door. <laughs> Stalls outside, he said. Wants to know if you want to take that cow's now. Tell him we gratefully accept, I answered. Can you know us, right? Freeman nodded. He said it's already. He just, he just passes us. That's it, Rarity said. It's not. Keep him waking. She placed her saddle bags on her back and walked past Freeman towards the main door. Rest followed a quick suggestion. When they got outside, they found the carriage with six pegs inside the royal guard harness to it. Star was swinging by the door, a small smile on his face. It was looked for odd from a pony of the group never seen smile before. Please, your girl is wits, he said, opening the door for them. The six mares nodded out. He turned around to say goodbye to Broomman. Thank you for helping my friends, Where's I whispered. You're welcome, Broomman replied, smiling. They'll call back and visit us, we'll do. Well, we're all going to have to pass through here to get the horse cut for a holiday, so we will. Applesack replied, You got the fun feel of some fun for a visit. Oh, I think I will. Prim replied, Let kill you, six. And that six mares turned around and began to board carrots. Was where is I turn? Star searched her closely. Oh, and Flair said one more thing. She took out a bag of bits from her pants, threw them to her. Was he kind of in her mouth? You're 50 bits, I believe. First, I went shot. But he said it was a pay toll. I wouldn't get him back at all. If I ever got back, Star chuckled. <laughs> In a way, it's a pay toll, but more of a deposit. I give the money back to those who return from horse cow alive, and more or less one piece. No return, and I find on the next kid to give him the bits. Where's I played surprised at this? In that case, could I have fire wings bits as well? But Star looked there oddly. I would, if you know it's next of kin. First I nod. I give him that. I'm his next of kin. I'm his daughter. Star's jaw adopted a revelation. He quickly recovered and returned a questioning look. Do you have proof? As I quickly nodded, took out the medallion around her neck, and up in the word, A pen. She saw the picture to him. Star fell back in surprise. And that's my mother, if you're worried. Well, that's easy to say. Give me a moment to find this bits. Raced away back to his tears, came back there with a small bag of bits in his mouth. That's the moment of flash eye. Put the bits in her sack along with her own. First, sir, whatever you did, whatever you suffered while you were in horse cup, I don't think I want to know. I'm just glad you returned to us. Star opened the door to carrots and bowed his head. Was you a long, useful life? First, I bowed her head and said, Thank you for looking after my friend, Star. I was you a long piece, too. With that, she took to the carrots and laid out across from her, since the carrot is faced for ten ponies. With the six points secure, Star slammed the door shut. Just under his hoof, the team of Pegasi began to gallop down the road. A few bursts at her wings and took off into the sky and began making their way to Pineville. Star watched the carriage disappear with satisfaction, knowing the six of them were returned safe. 
Why didn't you tell them that you knew they had called out to her? Primrin asked, walking up alongside him. Star shrugged. I don't know. We didn't hear. Primrin shrugged as well. I'm not so either. Well, that maybe it might be best if we did. Could there be more? He returned to face a unicorn stallion, supposed to be guarding our gate. Commander, a few horses are outside, requesting entry. Request permission to start trading with Equestria. Star sighs while he's surprised, while well, Primrin finding delight. Well, then, I guess we better see what this is about. A celebrated tone. Star watched the northern gate, well knowing the economic boom that the trust was about to endure. First, I looked out the window and at the ground. Mostly, the small fields and towns and forests rushed by. They'd been flying now for an hour or so, and the Pegasus was beginning to get restless. She knew it would have been far on the Pegasus pulling the carrots. But she wished she could get there faster. The arrows were getting pretty good pace as well. Come on, come on, come on! Pinky yelled, so we got her seat. I really need to live! I thought we told you to go before we left! Erdy glass he got her butt, giving her an oil look. We need to go soon, but he really needs to go now! Pinky retorted. You think we could have a quick break? And that's what they did. He stopped in the middle of nowhere so Pinky could have a quick toilet break. Once she came back, they set off again. This time with Rainbow Dallas outside, followed the carriage from above, saying she wanted to stretch her wings. While later, Rarity rested her head on the window sill. Once the clouds by, a flock of birds would fly south. The start of migration, she thought cheerfully. Now she wished she could go out there and fly like Rainbow Dash was. Fly with her birds along so and away. Although well, she preferred to ground to the air. Every now and again, her Pegasus instinct told her to take off and fly. This was those, those moments. Rainbow Dash, she called. Soon enough, Rainbow Dash was soon flying by the window, looking at her friend with concern. Hey, Flareside, you all right? Flareside nodded. I'm fine at the moment, thank you. I was just wondering if you could help me fly again when I take this bandage off. We have a grand. You mean that? Of course. You better get ask the Questia's best flyer. Flareside grinned. All right. Rainbow cheered over her words. Mark my words. With me as my coach, he'll become the second best flyer in Equestria. Damn it, Sling and all. Flareside grinned a little liar. Yay. <laughs> she cheered. She was staring at Grim before looking in front of them. When they did, their eyes went wide as their heads. Look! They both squeaked. Tears of joy covered their eyes. Twilight, Pinky, Rarity, and Alphasar poked their heads out the windows and gasped of joy. Ahead of them, the familiar buildings of Ponyville began to appear. All of them clinging to bright sunlight, looking majestic. The five mares in the carriage began jumping about in excitement and hugging each other as they had done it. They were home. It looks amazing, Pinky said, ice white and green as white as her face. The town looked to be fully rebuilt, and repair work and line some of the roads were now gone. Even the town hall, which was dying to repair, was rebuilt and had an amazing new roof. A few minutes later, the carriage began to descend, prompting every pony on board to hold on tight, so salty as it felt like they nosedived into the town. On the street the carriage was going to land on, every pony stopped and started as the carriage leveled out and landed with a few bumps. Every pony all cut? Apple said gas was the carriage stop. Four heads signed in response. Oh man, that was awesome! Rainbow exclaimed. He saw large green eyes who praised the Pegasus crew. You guys and me should have a race at that point. Twice shook her head quickly to clear the dizziness. They pushed the door open with her magic. Quickly jumped out. While close behind by every pony else, a few gas of whispers came from the ponies in the street when they emerged. Far as I could hear, though, that most of them were a joy greeting them back. I recognized what voice called from the crowd. Apple's not coached for a speaker. Green when she saw Apple Bloom pushed her way to the crowd, racing towards her. Apple Bloom! She cried, racing towards her. The two men said her entire price. Tears were joy in her eyes. Why are you buying? Apple Bloom yelled, making Apple Jack flinch. We got lace of lace of lace, and I fell. I fell. Apple Bloom broke down and began to cry. I'll hear now, little sis. It's okay. Everything's gonna be okay from now on. Apple Jack cooed softly. Sleep Bell's Gulu emerged from the crowd second layer, with a little unicorn gasping in joy seeing her big sister. The two men each other's eyes, looking for a moment, they galloping up to each other and hugging just as tightly as Applejack her sister was. Oh, I miss you, Ring! Sleep cried, only trying to hold back tears. Rarity was an error matter. Her tears were falling down freely. I missed you too, sweetie. I missed you so much. Pinky slowly squealed with joy as she saw her keepers, Mr. and Mrs. Cake and the kids, Oh, I miss you all so much! She bounced over, giving her a quick hug. 
Please quickly return to Hug. And I'm honest. Mr. Cake said, We're getting bored a piece of crap we had. It's cool to see you back, Pinky. Mrs. Cake said, glaring at her husband. Good to see you all back. But as they smiled, the heart wanted to see you. Once this ring of Pinta school it gave her a quick hug and nicked her head. Twilight? A voice behind the Pegasus and Unicorn made her turn around. Like Spike standing where boxes on the ground, Tommy was shocked. Spike! Twilight cried, raced over and picked him up with her hooves, tugging him tight. I thought I would never see you again! If I'm honest, there were a few moments I thought I wouldn't come back. Ah, oh, it's good to be home. Spike pulled away for Twilight, and looked at Flourish I was shocked as he saw the scars on her face. How'd you get those? Flourish I smiled. It's a long story, Spike, but I'll tell you later. She returned to the head and drank to her cottage. Hey, where do you think you're going? Reva called. Flourish I turned around to see her friends looking at her. Thought we might get there together. My treat, what do you say? Flourish I tilted her head low. Sounds lovely, Rainbow, but not yet. There's something I need to do first. Give me an hour and I'll join you all. See you later. And thanks. For everything. Last, she turned around and walked slowly towards her cottage. While Pony smoothed out her way, looking at her shock due to the scars on her face and back. None of them asked about the wounds. Nor did they say anything if she was looking well. But they simply smiled and seen his quick words of green and how pleased he was to see her. After an hour later, after being stopped by several neighbors and other ponies, wondering where she and her friends had been, she found herself back at the outskirts of Ponyville, gazing at a familiar sight, making her sigh in relief and joy. Her sweet, peaceful cottage, with a stream running under her bridge, a bird's nest under the roof and trees around it, standing as it did as so she had never left. On a second thought, she began to break into a trot, dead in a canter, and quickly found herself galloping towards her cottage. Tears of joy seeing it. As she neared, she saw a torrent of colors coming towards her from the windows, towards the evening in the chimney. She stopped as a horde of animals and birds rushed over and jumped her, pinning her to the ground and making her giggle. She felt the tickles tongues all over her face. Those that didn't turned to squeak to her welcome, and jumped about as their caretaker returned to see them. She got up from the ground and rubbed her back quickly, hoping that it would ease the pains she was feeling after the tumble. She looked among the horde for one particular animal, but didn't see him. She looked up towards the door and saw Angel sitting by his hut, tapping his wrist as if he had a watch, and Flareside was late for dinner. Flareside rushed over to him and embraced him. And with a bunny, quickly returned the hug with joy and relief. I miss you so much, Angel, she squeaked. And her eyes pulled away, pointed to the scars to her cheek and looked concerned. What? Them? I'll tell you later. Right now, I need to do something quick. Now I have all the time in the world for you. She rushed inside and went upstairs. Not barring to notice the mess the animals had made while she was absent. She jumped off her saddlebags, hung them onto her bed, and quickly went to her wardrobe and found a small sack for her to use. She took it out, walked over to her saddlebags, and got out the age beam, fire wing, and her wing blades. The set was on her left, so you could surprisingly find after being crushed and mangled by the flail and her smashed side. In that moment, she seriously remembered the flail meeting her side, the sound of crushing bone and the sound of steel to unnatural steel. She cleared her head, quickly set her weapons in the sack, tied at the end with string. You see a hat? Our fight goes through this, I tell you. If I... We was a lot together, the lot of us. She said, her kind to the weapons. Oh, if you see my dad, my son, I did. Be a fiat for one foot, my son, I did. And if I don't know, you see, the father, for me to have one my son, I did. And if I was telling the truth, we're going a lot more far in the future together. Right now, you'll all be put to rest. You have earned it as much as I have. She turned around and brought out a part of the bedroom floor with her teeth. And once it was high enough, held it off to a hoof. And below the floor were a few inches of safety space. Perfect for hiding place of things such as weapons in the sack. Stop laughing! She picked up the sack and placed it on her bed. It was being just enough for the sack to fully go in. Still being able to close the door. Your attention can be different for her to get your money 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 to get it's not yet. Goodbye. And may the place we achieve together be long and prosperous. With that, she set the four bar up and flattened it. 
But good luck because he didn't do anything at all. And you know, he's also too thinking. Until I text me. She breathed a heavy sigh of relief. Late stare, finding herself in a familiar place. She can now truly feel this officially over. Her adventure was done. She got up and made her way downstairs. My fix are getting the cause cleaned up. Join her friends for a well earned, proper dinner. Oh my gosh, guys. The next part is the epilogue. I. I can't believe it. And you know what? This was a pretty damn good fix.